So hello you guys, welcome back to my channel. It's time to talk about episode 3 of The Last of Us because I haven't seen an episode of TV talked about as much as this in a very, very long time. I've got thoughts. Before we get started, just letting you guys know the more extended version of my uh, The Last of Us reactions go up over on my Patreon. The link is in the description down below. There's a whole bunch of reactions going on over there. I'm doing movie reactions, live streams, some old shows like The X-Files, Buffy, stuff like that, along with newer shows like I'm finishing up The Witcher Blood Origins. I'm working through Doom Patrol, Gotham, American Horror Story, Doctor Who, Star Trek, fun stuff like that. So yeah, the link's down below. There's a bunch of stuff going on over there. Let's talk about The Last of Us. First of all, the one negative thing I will say about this episode is I had I don't watch trailers often, if ever. I generally stay away from trailers. I don't want to see stuff. I don't want to be spoiled. I know trailers are supposed to entice you, bring you into a show. I don't do that. I'm like, no, no, I want to go in with nothing. I want to know nothing. I'd seen, was it a trailer for this episode or the overall season trailer? I don't know. I'd seen some sort of trailer and it had hinted at them being a couple or they'd been in a shot or something together. So I kind of had a feeling... I had a feeling I knew what this one was going to be about. So that's the only negative thing I would say is that I wish I hadn't watched the trailer. That's it. It was an extended episode, so it felt more kind of like a movie or a short movie. I just, I don't even know where to begin with this one. I absolutely loved everything about it. Everything. The thing I loved most about it is it was so different to anything that we'd seen in regards to an apocalypse romance. Usually, you know, you see a couple get together, you have to watch the struggles of being in a goddamn end of world situation. And then it's there, there's struggle, there's conflict, um, zombies, whatever you want to call them. It's usually more about a relationship trying to survive the time that they live in, trying to survive the situation and the outbreak. This wasn't that at all. It focused solely on Bill and Frank. It focused solely on these two characters, how they met and how they just got together and stayed together. Yeah, we saw that little damn domestic dispute out on the street where he was like, if you don't let me mow this lawn, I'm going to walk into that electric fence. Normal couple shit. But seeing a relationship just be, just exist, was gorgeous, let alone see a gay relationship just exist, just be. There was no... Okay, the ending was heart-wrenchingly sad, yes. Agreed. But they're, like, the way it was portrayed, it was just a regular relationship. There was ups, there was downs. I, I think this episode did fantastically at portraying these little tender moments. Like, the sitting at the piano playing the song, which is now on my playlist, and I've listened to it a sickeningly amount of times. Or the scene later on in the episode where um, he's given him his pills at the table, and it's just so normal. Seeing that there was a little art studio set up in the house, painting was going on, there was gardening going on. That's one of the things that absolutely killed me. Oh, seeing that Frank had his own little artist studio where he could paint, he could be creative, do such a normal life, non-apocalypse pastime. That mixed with the fact that when he got older and he wasn't able to anymore, Bill took on the responsibility of watering the plants, of going around and fixing out the, the exterior of the house because he knew that was important to Frank. That's the kind of tender love I love to see in shows and you don't get to see it that often those little moments that are so human and so intimate I liked a lot of the misdirection that was in this episode too like when um when Bill got shot uh during the raid at night time you presumed he was gonna die oh no he got shot and then he looked it, it did look like he died on the table then he didn't and then it just hard cuts and Frank's the one in the wheelchair Frank's the one who seems to have taken a turn um when in an earlier scene, Bill had been the one who said, I'm sorry, I'm getting older faster than you. I just think that did an incredible job of showing that like a relationship in life isn't reduced to just these bad things that happened to you, that your worst moments. Like Bill getting shot, they moved on from it. They grew. That wasn't the end of the story. It wasn't the end of him. Um, like in any relationship, if you're together with somebody, yeah, stuff's going to happen both within the relationship and personally. You, you guys, things are going to happen to you. Experiences are going to come along to kick you in the face. But they just got over them. Like any healthy relationship, they got over them and, and kept going. The episode was more about them rather than the world and how they dealt and survived through all of this. And I thought it was an absolute divine way to show love in the apocalypse. To show love in this time. This one little self-contained episode with just the two of them. I love attention to detail. Small things like how when they sit down for their first meal 
Um, Frank turns to plate a certain way because he likes it a certain way. Bill gives him a certain wine. And in their last scene together where they have their last meal, you see the plate be fixed the same way. The same wine is brought out. Listen, I would have absolutely pulled a bill as well. When Frank was like, yeah, look, this is how I want to go. Love me the way I need to be loved. And then Bill was like, okay, but I'm going with you. That would absolutely be me. And his little speech where he said, I'm old and I'm content. Oh. Seeing as well how both of them chose to just go on their own terms. They survived this long and then they were just like, yeah, all right, we're out now. They weren't part of a community or trying to build this new world the way you've seen in so many other apocalypse shows. They both just stayed by themselves in their little housing estate, in their little bliss bubble. You know, where there was nobody. Well, I know they met Joel and they met Tess, but there wasn't really anybody else there around them. They chose to just f stay, just fuck off by themselves and stay in their world. And I, that's, man, that's how I'd want to be in an apocalypse. Fuck that. Fuck trying to make friends and be part of a big community and, you know, get along with new people. No, just fuck off by yourself and do your own thing. Some people were complaining that the episode was a bottle episode or um, it wasn't needed. I completely disagree with that. The whole episode, it, it humanised the show. It took you away from the fact that, oh look, there's a fucking zombie, there's a cooker, whatever. Stibbity stab, kill it. In that one episode, it managed to humanise two characters in such a way. I was so invested in them that I, I forgot what I was watching midway through the goddamn episode. All I cared about was them. And the episode leads to Joel accepting Ellie and deciding, okay, I'm going to take her. I'm going to set down some ground rules. This is it. Especially when he read the note where it said that all of the weapons were left to him to take care of Tess. But Tess is now dead. Again, Joel had, had my guy had like, you know, the weekend from hell. Lost Tess, gained an Ellie and then lost two of his oldest friends. But yeah, it resulted in him deciding, all right, well, she's the one I'm going to look after. She's the one I'm going to take and protect because that's 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 what people like me do like was said in the letter it eventually led to him getting the car batteries well and getting the car so it did progress the story but that wasn't the object of the episode and i loved that i loved that yes it still fit into the story but at the same time it was this whole self-contained universe i feel like we got a little bit of a feel as well for what joel is like this episode seeing him where he turned up for the <laughs> the fancy dinner on the lawn scene but when you see him have that talk with Bill, where he says, you know, no worries, man. I see you sitting there with your weapon pointed at me and this, there's ten... What was that? There's tension at this table. But seeing him kind of level with him, be like, no, I get it. Um, you know, if Tess brought someone home like this, I wouldn't be happy either. I'm a paranoid motherfucker too. But the way he referred to Tess, where you could see him stumble over the words and then he just simply lands on mine. That gave us such an insight to him. He didn't even know what to call her. I mean, at this point, they'd been dating for, what, 10 years more, him and Tess? And he still didn't know what to call her. He didn't want to put that label on her of being girlfriend or his girl or his woman, whatever. Because it's almost like he wanted to keep that emotional distance between him and her. Like a self-preservation thing. Understandable, given what he had lost up to that point. I don't know how my guy is going to fare moving forward, because my God. I've seen some people misconstrue that scene and take it as Joel being awkward around Bill. Um, simply because Bill and Frank are two dudes together. I completely disagree with that point. I think it was more of a fact of he didn't know what to call Tess. Maybe him and Tess never had that conversation like that. What are we conversation? And he didn't want to give her the name of girlfriend or woman or whatever. Because, like I said, he wants to keep that emotional... Or at least keep the illusion that he has that emotional distance between him and her. Yes, I picked up on the fact that the open window at the end is the... Um, one of the loading screens from the game, I know. Yeah, I was too emotionally compromised to even note that. My God, by the end of that episode, I felt spent. I think it's because it's the type of episode that, yes, it's sad, but it's relatable. It's so beautiful and it, it pushes your buttons in such a way that for most of the episode, I was sitting there thinking, what would I do if that was me and my partner, if that was me and my fiancé? What would I do? Probably my favourite part of this is how they didn't go all in with the gore. The two of them died in bed together and, it, you know, as soon as they, they left the screen and they went to the bedroom, I was like, all right, we're going to get some messed up, gory, last impressions of them uh, once they're dead, whatever. We didn't get that. Even when Joel and Ellie go into the house, we see him try the door, but we don't get that. We don't get that visual of them. The last we see of them is they're happy together. They're crying. They're, um, Bill's rolling Frank and I think he has his hand on his shoulder. It's unusual, especially in a show like this too veer away from showing like the horror aspect 
And it, it was a beautiful fucking decision because we didn't need to see it. We knew what happened. The acting and music choices this episode were perfect. I... I know Bill from Anchorman, but also, I'm almost certain, isn't he the guy from Pam and Tom? Or Pam and Tommy as well? He's one of the dudes that's involved with distributing the tape. I would have never pinned an actor like him for a role like this. But my God, it was so perfectly done. It was... I haven't been able to stop thinking about it since I've seen it and I've watched it at this point I think three or four different times. It's artistic, it's it's tender, it's intimate, it's gorgeous. I just oh even down to like like I said, just the little details that I love. I go feral for the little details. Like how at the end of the episode when Joel showers and he cleans up, finally, thank God he's not pulling a Daryl Dixon and going with unwashed balls for like twelve years. When he comes downstairs, he's wearing one of Frank's plaid shirts, one of his flannel shirts. Obviously, with it, like with anything like this, unfortunately, it's being review bombed online because people are sad, sad, strange individuals. If that had been a male and a female lead, would you have been okay with it? Probably. I just don't understand how you can hate love. I don't get it. I don't get how you can watch something like this that's so beautiful. And then, you know flex your angry little hands and be like I'm gonna write a really negative review like what's wrong with you go outside get some sun and what's funny is I usually don't like extended episodes I usually find if an episode is extended there's always bits or pieces that I'm like oh man you could have left that out you could have shortened this you could have tightened this bit up I didn't find that with this one this is a ballsy show they're taking chances and doing things that for a show that's this huge and this new it's risky to throw in uh, a standalone romance love episode three episodes in when people are tuning in going all right what are we going to get today what kind of what kind of fuckery are we going to get to see and then choosing to put that in it's ballsy man i love it mm -hmm. so yeah those are some of my thoughts on that to recap <laughs> beautifully acted beautifully executed love the little attention to detail like with you know the watering of the plants at the end of the episode getting to see such small mundane arguments like, let me mow the fucking lawn, Bill. And like I said, yeah, it's sad that it's getting pushed back. It's crazy looking at the reviews of it because, like, it's got majority, majoritively, um, like, five-star ratings or the highest tier rating you can give it. And then, equally, the lowest rating, one-star rating. I mean, like, yeah, I'm not surprised because people out there are crazy. You know, seeing a lot of people be like, oh my god, they're pushing the woke agenda. Is this your first experience with finding out that gay people are real? That ain't an agenda, buddy. That's just, that's just life. And if this made you uncomfortable, um, boy, Ellie's storyline is really, really going to be a kick in the face for you. <laughs> that's, that's what I don't understand. How can people watch this and be like, oh my God, blah, 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 when it was in the game and also Ellie. It was good seeing Tess again, obviously, even though she just died last week. I feel like we did lose her very early on. Um, the actress that plays her is a fantastic actress. I was surprised that we lost her that early, to be honest. So it was good seeing her back again. I wonder, will we get many more flashbacks where we get to see her? Maybe instances between her and Joel that we haven't seen yet, like with the dinner party scene or the lawn scene. I think Ellie really kind of came into her own this episode too. You get a lot of that sarcastic back and forth between her and Joel that is... <sighs> a cornerstone of the game it is one of the absolute building blocks one of the foundations of the relationship is that sarcasm that back and forth i think she's great in the role she's funny she's a, she's a little fireball you can feel the energy coming off her on screen and you guys know you guys know my opinion on pedro i may have restarted narcos again for him i may have i did the cast of the show it's just ah. The thing I love about him, and you see it, you're seeing it a lot. We're only three episodes in, you're seeing it an awful lot. That's why I think he was perfectly cast as Joel. He's the type of actor who he is so expressive. He has he has an expressive face, but he has incredibly expressive eyes. My guy can make you feel something without ever saying a word. Especially in the episode um, episode two, the scene between him and Tess, where Tess say, says, you know, you got to save who you can. You see that moment between them. He doesn't say anything, but his face says everything. He is perfectly cast as Joel. Yeah. But I've, I've been speaking for 23 minutes. I need to stop. But that's it for this reaction. No, it's not. That's it for this chat, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know your opinions on the episode down below. Again, the link to my Twitter and my Instagram and my Patreon is down below if you want to check me out on other social media websites.
I can't wait. I cannot wait. This has become the thing that, that helps define my weeks. It helps shape my weeks. I am looking forward to Monday every week because that's the day I watch The Last of Us on. Monday is The Last of Us Day. So yeah, again, let me know your thoughts down below and I will talk to you all soon.